Hi everyone, I am Padma, and today I'm very delighted to share a fascinating aspect of history. Yep, you guessed it, the Spanish Civil War, 1936 to 1939. In fact, people have debated that the Spanish Civil War is one of the causes for World War II. So without further ado, let's get started. Now surely, every one of you has heard of Pablo Picasso, the famous artist in Spain. But have you seen this? This is a painting called Guernica, and is actually one of the most famous paintings Picasso made himself. Now, as a huge admirer of Picasso myself, I don't remember ever seeing this painting before my mentor, Ellis, introduced this to me. It was rather embarrassing. Anyway, the story goes like this. In 1937, morning of April 26th, the German aerial army dropped 10,000 bombs on Guernica, a little town in the Basque country. Guernica is one of the most traditional places in Spain, and along with Catalonia, are two of the places that wanted independence. The number of deaths varies, but the bulk of sources suggest it to be about 1,600. So why did Picasso care so much about it? Why did he make such a huge painting that is enough to cover a wall, for this matter? Not only is this the first huge attack aimed specifically at civilians, which is rather disheartening, but it is also one that shouldn't have happened at all. In any case, um, the Basque people did not offend Germany in any way possible. So, Picasso saw painting Gar Guernica as an opportunity to garner international support. So you might ask, what business does Germany have in Spain? With that, we'll backtrack a little. First, Spanish Civil War is made up of two major sides, the Republicans and the Nationalists. Republicans, or liberals, consist of unions, socialists, or communists, and the government. And these people want more, uh, better working conditions, more rights, more freedom, etc. Now, nationalists, on the other hand, or also known as conservatives, consists of wealthy aristocrats, wealthy landowners, people with a bunch of wealth. And of course, these people would want to maintain their wealth and land, etc. So you can think of those two forces trying to obliterate the other side. And because of this, families are divided. See, a mother who is loyal to the church, thus the nationalists, will fight for the nationalists, while a father who believes in education without the church influence might be in support of the Republic Republicans. We can go on forever analyzing how the nationalists and Republicans came about, but in general terms, the Second Republic prior to the outbreak of the war was in extremely bad terms. People were impoverished, wealth gap was high, the government was weak, the church was having too much power, the Spanish army was brutal to citizens. Things became even worse for the nationalists when the Frente Popular, which is right here in this po um, poster, a very Republican-centric party, came to power after the election. Now, in order to learn how Germany came into play, there is a significant man we still need to unravel. He is Francisco Franco, also known as Caudillo, or leader of the nationalists. Franco, although cruel, was very strategic in his military tactics. Now, I mentioned earlier Guernica wanted independence, which means they could enforce land reform within their areas and is something the nationalists feared. At that time, Hitler was looking to test his military powers, and therefore used Guernica as a military testing ground. With the non-intervention committee, Germany was allowed ample room to get back on their feet, thus becoming a future threat in World War II. Just as Germany and Italy helped nationalists, many people also helped Republicans, and those are known as international brigades. The Spanish Civil War, ironically, is not just fought by the Spanish people. In fact, there are over 35,000 people from 50 countries fighting for the Republicans. Some, like the famous musician Paul Robeson, wanted to put an end to the spread of fascism. Some was driven by the Republicans' perseverance in achieving freedom of speech, women's rights, etc. 
Some was angered by the nationalists after seeing Picasso's Guernica at the World Fair. So people choose to fight for many reasons. Now we're going to talk about propaganda. Usually, the people would want to glorify their own side while demonizing the opposing side. So as you can see, there are a lot of posters here. Allow me to draw your attention on picture 9 with the swastika symbol. With the words, this is the fascist in Spanish, this Republican poster is used to condemn the nationalists with the tiny words, misery, destruction, persecution, and death inside the symbol. Pretty neat, huh? Apart from propaganda posters, radios are also prolific as only 56% of the population is literate and the bulk of Spain's population lives outside big cities at the time. Knowing the history behind Picasso's huge Canva Guernica really helps us as we can now see how each scattered piece is a symbol of the bombing, with the screaming man representing the countless deaths and different animals representing the agriculture of Basque, the agriculture um, lifestyle of Basque people. The painting showed how cruel Los Nacionales, or the Nationalists, had been, which inspired many people to fight against fascism. Guernica even became a globally used icon of political protest, and is now, especially during protests against terrorizing innocents and abusing power. Of course, other artworks such as José Miró's Old Shoe and Salvador Dali's soft construction with boiled bean um, are also really famous. The Spanish Civil War also introduced many of Spain's finest poets and writers, such as Miguel Hernández and Federico García Lorca. The International Brigade also produced great works such as Heap of Runes, Dressing Station, and George Orwell's masterpiece, Homage to Catalonia. Photography plays a critical role also in capturing realistic or fake elements of the war, but it also brings back memories of war so that younger generations could grieve in the modern age. Robert Ca Capa and Agusti Centelles are two of the most famous male photographers. On this page, we have Capa's famous falling soldier. While it is faked, or stage, he still shows some great skills in dealing with the Lycan camera limitations and the high-level balance of the aesthetic and historical photograph. Right now, we have Thandeya's masterpiece, and as you guessed, it is also staged. Just look at the difference after cropping that huge space on the left. The awkwardness of the man in the suit and his tiny pistol. Caddy Horna and Margaret McKellys, both born women and Jewish, were recognized as the most famous uh, female photographers. Horner's photograph work is associated with avant-garde and surrealist-like qualities, as you can see with the abundance of mannequins, dolls, and statues. McKellys captures ordinary women's lives not shown in men's photography, therefore depicting an entirely different side of war apart from the usual violence. In the early 20th century, photography was one of the few socially accepted professions for women. When Hitler came, these two photographers were forced to leave their country and become photographers. Unlike male photography, women photography depicted a less chaotic environment. By tending to their work on their studios, their art styles completely differed from that of men. So this is a really interesting fact that both um, female and male could produce such a drastic or different piece of art altogether. And unlike most wars, women did participate in combat on equal terms with men. It's normal to see women wearing uniforms, holding rifles, and talking with male soldiers. These women are also called milicianas, who are recognized for their bravery and selflessness to, def to fight the nationalists sometimes showing even more valor than men. But even for women who weren't Milithianas exemplified what was called gender consciousness at the time, which means doing domestic jobs like sewing, cooking, washing, while defending their hometowns. 
I like using the word solidarity to describe women as they allied with other women, regardless of their political stance in nearby pueblos or rural areas. As men became silent to avoid the attention of the Franquist leaders, women gradually took on the role of men. Throughout the entirety of the war, fifty thousand people left Spain. Most went into exile to hide from Franco, especially towards countries like Algeria. France, Morocco, Russia, and Mexico. Let's take a look at this. No sé, no sé, porque en cambio se habla mucho de, de recorrido de tierra y de al aire. No sé por qué no tenían simpatía con nosotros y por tanto nosotros hicimos todo lo que nos mandaban, todo lo que, que era necesario hacer. Los marinos republicanos realmente se fueron cuatro mil. Un día, y yo creo que es como si se les hubiese tragado el mar totalmente, ¿eh? no, se ha no se volvió a hablar de ellos para nada. So, as you can see from the clip, it really isn't an easy job for refugees to escape by Navy. Um, yeah, so this is a really, really sad time for most Spaniards. So, it is an important part of the Spanish Civil War. When Franco won the war, as much as 280,000 Spaniards were detained in concentration camps in Spain, without including those imprisoned in France. It is estimated that 50,000 to 200,000 people were executed under Franco's regime. This huge range was due to the fact that Franco did not document the number of killings. In, in most cases, Exile was a huge part that led to the suffering of Spanish people, as they are mostly condemned, segregated, and humiliated by people in their new homes. Post-war period is all wrought with stress and anxiety, disappearance, and torment. No food. Testimonies even indicated how people caught live rats for a living. In fact, my mentor Ellis read something that couldn't be retrieved by the internet again. It said that government officials working for Franco were trying to come up with a solution for hunger in Spain, and a fellow brought the idea of feeding the population dolphin sandwiches. <laughs> Regardless of whether it's true or not, it shows how crazy the situation is, doesn't it? I'm sure this is the first time you're so bombarded with information as it is quite heavy, but I'd like to share with you something fishy about the war. Yes, Spain's stolen babies. Even my mentor Ellis didn't learn this until she came across a book herself, a rather fortunate thing that's been passed on to me. Now, it's really not a joke that babies are in fact stolen from Republican mothers by the Franquist leaders. The reason for this is that Franquist leaders do not want strong women who are on the same level as men to educate their child to become Republicans. Republican women were perceived as coverage artists who sang in nightclubs, therefore rivals to Catholicism, deemed to be unfit to mother her child. The nationalists framed child stealing as protecting the child from communist ideology, which was seen as the greater evil. Of course, nuns and hospital workers behind all this claimed that either the hospital caught fire or the kid died with respiratory problems or any other dodgy excuses. Needless to say, mothers went through depths of hell just by going through the entire process of childbirth and not having seen the child at all. If it wasn't bad enough, children adopted by nationalist families even rejected their generic parents. This is a great example of how history is constantly changing and that we really don't humanities to bring us to the better future. As a side note, Franco became a dictator in Spain for over 50 years after the war. For a person who has lived through 40 years of Francoism, then cultural repression under Francoism, never knowing what became of Spain, never being able to come to terms with their unresolved conflict, life might not look too good for them. For a war that's had such a huge impact on World War II, and one that fought for what the world united to fight against, fascism. It's a pity Spain's history isn't as well recognized because of their inability to grapple with history sooner.
This is also a phenomenon called historical memory. Spain still has so much work to do, like establishing museums and more educational re resources to spread truth, which brings us to the end of this little story. Actually, not a story, even a session on the Spanish Civil War. Thank you.